Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, this video that I'm about to show you is inspired by the video I watched this morning done by a friend of mine, Chuck Bomarito at Outside Screwball. If you haven't checked out Chuck, you need to go to his channel and check him out. Outside Screwball. Chuck, I've known him for about six years, never had the privilege of shaking his hand, but I hope that happens pretty quick here. Uh, Chuck is the kind of guy that shows you what he does in his home shop, in his garage, and certainly the kind of gentleman that you would want to live next door to. Nice guy. So, Chuck, thanks for the shout-out on that video, and uh, I hope that uh, my guys, anybody that's watching this, go to Chuck's channel, watch what he does, hit that subscribe button, drive his subscribers up. That would be awesome. Anyway, today I'm going to show you a technique for ganging up multiple parts and performing an operation or multiple operations on multiple parts relatively quick. And there's a lot of different ways to do it, and the technique that I'm going to show you today is one of many for sure. So let's take a walk over to the mill and make that happen. Well, the challenge this morning is to, let's say, put a chamfer on the ends of all of these pieces. It could be a chamfer, it could be a radius, it could be an angle, it could be whatever you want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a second vise, and I'm going to put all of these pieces in this vise. Now, the challenge you're going to encounter at this point is lining up all the ends. You can do that many different ways. I've seen very commonly a second vise put on its side on spacer blocks and allow the pieces to fall using gravity against the surface plate or table, whatever, and that will give you the projection that you're looking for. Yep, that will work. I'm going to show you a different technique that you may not have thought of. It may be an aha palm to forehead moment. And I hope you like it. Let's go over to the mill, and we're going to do this whole thing on the mill pretty much uh, seamlessly. Let's go. Once you know what the feature is that you're going to cut on your part, uh, that is an important number to remember. If you're going to put a quarter-inch radius on your part or a half-inch radius, you want to make sure that the part projects up sufficiently so that the cutter can perform its operation. I'm going to use a half-inch parallel right there against the jaw. Put your vise in there, clamp down on the vise, close the table, close the vise. There you go. Now we know that this top of this vise right here, this is the top of the vise ultimately, is a half inch from this back surface. Load your parts. I'm going to drive all the parts against the stationary jaw of the mother vise. Once you're content that they are all up against the stationary jaw, snug the second vise. Gently tap the parts down so they don't bounce. Lock it down. Unloose in the main vise. Take the half inch parallel out or whatever spacer you put in there and rotate the vise. Boom, there you go. Second set of parallels with the spring. Clamp block to apply pressure to the parts. Now anytime you gang up parts like this, you cannot trust them all to be the same thickness because stock does vary a little bit. Maybe you got two bars, maybe you got pieces in there rotated from how it was extruded, whatever. Good way to take that gap up. Cardboard from the back of your notepads. Lock it down. There you go. You can access both sides, front and rear. And depending on how the parts are positioned in this vise, you could perform multiple operations on that part. This is seven at a time. If the parts are longer than the vise, and you can still get away with a setup like this, put this vise up on parallels as well so that the part can project out of both sides that way you can just flip the vise over and actually do both ends it's a great way to establish cosmetic surfaces chamfers and other operations rounds uh, very much like chuck's clamps that he made in his video and that's exactly why i did this show you an alternate way to do that You need an angle on the end of the part, this is an ideal setup as well. A vise in a vise always works well. Many of these grinding type vices have a large relief 
back here in the corner because of the grinding process. So if you use a parallel, make sure that the parallel doesn't go down in that relief or you may be in for a shock when you're done. I'm going to lay this one flat. Standing my parts up. Put another spacer block in there so that the pressure block is above the parts as well. Back to the paper concept. And lock it down. Take the parallels out. This is the part where you can take the vise out of the vise. Remove whatever spacer you have. And set your angle. Vice and device. You can now angle cut all of these pieces right across the nose, all secured based on this. If you are not happy with the end squareness of the part, lay this vise on a surface plate sideways so that you have the benefit of the surface plate establishing your squareness of the set that you've just loaded. Those are two techniques that I use quite often in here ganging them up, vice and device. Get yourself one. If you don't have one, save up. But get it and take care of it. It'll take care of you. Thanks for watching, guys. Do appreciate you stopping by. Go check out Chuck Bomberito. Hit that subscribe button. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you soon. Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.